Um, Train to Kill. Train to Kill, that is correct, 1989. <laughs> directed by H.K. Dial, who has a story credit on Lone Wolf McQ... Yeah. Lone Wolf McQuaid, uh, which is a Chuck Norris movie where he fights uh, David Carradine. That doesn't sound too hard, especially for Chuck Norris. Well, it's hard to make it look like a fight's going on. Yeah, that's true. All right. It's not one of my favorite Chuck Norris movies, and that tells you something. What's what your favorite your Chuck Norris? Norris? No. God damn it. <laughs> uh, probably Code of Silence. What, not Invasion USA? That one's awesome, too, but Code of Silence is more of, like, a movie. Ah. Uh, I have seen pretty much no Chuck Norris movies. Hmm. Yeah. You should definitely watch those, two, And maybe also... What was that? Silent Prey or something like that? There's one where he fights like a, a monster serial killer. It's great. A serial killer that kills monsters or a serial no, killer that is he a monster? He is a monster. He's oh. basically an unkillable, like, just dude. Okay. So yeah, trained to kill. Um, jeez. Stunt coordinator on this film? Bob Bragg. The stunt coordinator on Waxworks 1 and 2. Huh, really? Yeah. So I guess there were some stunts. Oh, yeah. Waxwork uh, 1 and 2, of course, from the director of uh, Exodus to Shanghai. Mm. Dick Hawks? Uh, oh? Mm-hmm. <sighs> that movie was okay. good. Okay. Yeah. Falcon. Ouch. Falcon Man. Falcon Man is coming. God willing. The creek star rise. So, anyway, uh... Cambodia. Cambodia. Yeah, it's a holiday. <laughs> Cambodia is a holiday, in case Pole. you missed the memo. Pot. Pull. Pot. Pull. Pot. Pull pot. Pull pot. Pull pot. Pull pot. Pull pot. Pull pot. Pull. Anyway. Oh. <coughs> holiday in Cambodia. Yep. So, um. So it's Cambodia. A helicopter's coming with Chuck Connors in it. Chuck Connors, of course, from. TV show Werewolf. Oh, yeah. Where he played the uh, ancient Hungarian werewolf, uh, Janos Skorzeny. <laughs> <laughs> the villain of the piece. Uh, he was also in Tourist Trap, where he wore a weird mask and chased people around, screaming things like, Little girl, see my friend! <laughs> That's creepy. Also, I think he had psychic yes. powers. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck? It's got Weird wild. movie. Um, and, you know, he was the Rifleman. I think he was in branded old Western TV shows. He was he was a star, basically. So he's coming to rescue his son, who is in Cambodia. Uh, his son played by Glenn Eaton, uh, who was in The Last Dragon playing one of Bruce Leroy's students. Huh, far out. <laughs> Bruce Leroy. Luke Bruce Leroy. The Last Dragon is a fucking trip, let me tell oh, you. Oh, yeah. That's another thing I gotta see, I can take it. Yeah, Kinda, yeah okay. it's like not as high priority as others, but yeah, it's kind of up there. Okay. Uh, by the way, Glenn Eaton's character is Somnog, mostly called Sam in the film. And Chuck Connor's character is Ed Cooper. Yep. So, yeah, there's some fighting. Uh, Somnog's adopted father gets killed, but Chuck Connors gets away with him. With Somnog. Heads back to the States. Somnog has this box that his mother told him to give to Chuck Connors, and they manage to sneak it past customs. Yeah, that seems weird to me. And go directly to a to a celebration. Mm-hmm. Little party they're having with their 7,000 children. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, there are a shit ton of them. And Frank Zagarino's there. Yep. Frank Zagarino playing Matt Cooper. Frank Zagarino, of course, from Armstrong. Yeah. One of my favorite action films. He was also in Project Shadow Chaser, where he played a cyborg. It was weird. Maybe Sounds an android. Weird blonde flat top interesting performance um mm -hmm. he was also in cyborg cop 3 
Not the best of the Cyborg Cop series, in my opinion. What is the best? Cyborg Cop 2, also known as Cyborg Soldier. Um, can I be excused? I gotta... Go for it. So, Frank Zagarino. Um, Frank Fragarino, as I wrote him in my yes, notes, and this... cannot stop saying now. <laughs> so, um, also, uh, there are some people being transported from prison to prison. Oh yeah, because we're, we're in military prison Nevada. Yeah, it's my favorite town in Nevada. And I love this, they're just, some guards say to them, you know, uh, let's, let's go. It's like, this is the weirdest way to release prisoners, but no, they just put them in something, transport in van. van, and it send blows them. up randomly. Mm, not that randomly, because... Because people are there. The guy in the blue blazer. Oh, right, there are people there. So among these people, well, uh, among the prisoners, uh, Robert Zadar, famous fucking uh, character actor from all sorts of B pictures. He's playing the character Walter Magic. <laughs> oh, God, that is his name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forgot about that. But Robert Zadar from Maniac Cop, Maniac Cop 2, the Maniac and Cop Maniac movie. Cop 3. Does he play Maniac Cop? Fuck yes. Okay, good. Uh, also, Samurai Cop. He does not play Samurai God Cop. God damn it! <laughs> I think his character's named Yoshita or something like that. He's, he's supposed to be Japanese. It's the weirdest thing. That's gotta be difficult. Samurai Cop is, is an experience. That's what you said before. But I really, really, really need to find a copy of the version with the Joe Bob Briggs commentary track. Which I have seen and is a delight, but is now like a collector's edition or something. Oh god. So I'll I'll probably end up spending a shitload on it. Four hundred dollars. Probably. Yeah. But yeah, Robert Zadar also in Future War, um, which is a movie with cyborgs, time travel, dinosaurs, Does he play Future and War? kickboxing. No, he plays one of the cyborgs. Okay. Who has a big fight with um the guy who replaced Jean-Claude Van Damme when they made Bloodsport 2. I don't know who that is. Uh, Daniel something? He keeps showing up in movies. He was in John Wick. Mm. He was the one, like, bodyguard of the main villain who put up more of a fight than anybody. Mm. Oh, He's the yeah. guy who knocks John Wick from one level of the nightclub down to another. Okay, cool. That guy. Yeah. Well, I can see why they would pick him yeah. as a replacement then. That makes yeah. sense. But yeah, in Future War, um, like they couldn't afford Robert Zadar for like more than one scene, so most of Robert Zadar's scenes are another guy pretending to be Robert Zadar. It's, it's kind very of weird. Difficult with that, mm -hmm. draw, right? Like, hmm. seriously, they have to show him from the back, <laughs> and even that barely does does it. Barely does it. Yeah, yeah barely does it. it. Anyway, also in this scene, Marshall R. Teague being released, playing the character Felix Brenner. Marshall R. Teague, of course, from Roadhouse, where he has the great fight with uh, Patrick Swayze. I don't. Roadhouse is awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah, Everybody talking Put about that Roadhouse. near the fucking top yeah. of your to-watch list, because okay. Roadhouse is a masterpiece. Okay, okay, okay. It's so great. It's like... It has some of the best dialogue ever written, and hilariously, they give none of that to Patrick Swayze. <laughs> so that's his character. He's, he's smart, he's tough, but man, he is not the guy with the fucking witty comebacks. And everybody else in the movie is. Except, of course, Marshall R. Teague. But yeah, he plays Jimmy in that. He's great. He's also from U.S. Seals 2. Where he was the military guy, they go in with the guy with the acid ball shooter. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. Wow, that movie was nuts. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Marshall Arteague is fucking great. Also, here, I believe we have. Harold Diamond playing the character Locke Sin. Harold Diamond was in Rambo 3. He's the guy who Rambo. Uh, Eskrima fights in a warehouse for money. I also haven't seen that. You should, that one's fun. And he's also in Killing American Style as the star. 
killing American style, of course, from the director of Samurai Cop. <laughs> of course. <coughs> and also here, we have the character Ace Duran, played by Henry Silva. Henry Silva from Code of Silence, starring Chuck Norris. Also from its remake, starring Steven Seagal, Above the Law. Hmm. Also from Ghost Dog. Also from The Manchurian Candidate. Exactly, where he played a Chinese man. <laughs> yeah, it didn't really... Um... Make sense? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially since I think he's Italian. He, he does seem to be pretty Italian. So yeah, back to the party. Um, oh when, yeah. When did the I want his ass line show up? Okay, so when, <clears throat> when Chuck Connors and Glenn Eaton come back into the country, uh, all these bad guys are like, like hanging out at the at the fucking airport, and he's like, and uh, Henry Silva's like, hey, I got a present for you. Opens the window, they look out. There's Chuck Chuck Connors, like, yeah, and fucking fucking Robert Zadar's like, I want his head, and Marshall Teague's like, and I want his ass, and I'm like, they're just mm -hmm. finger cuffs, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, uh, party for uh, Glenn Eaton when he comes back. He meets uh, Frank Zagarino's character's girlfriend in this. <clears throat> Character named Jesse Revels. Hmm. Played by uh, Lisa Liff. Miss Virginia 1983. Huh. Hmm. Well, she is pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was in a bunch of sitcoms. But, like, one episode each, pretty much. Oh. <clears throat> Hilariously, her character in an episode of Full House... Oh, boy. ...has a character page. You click on that character page, two photos of her. Both of them of the back of her head, as we can more clearly see Uncle Joey talking to her. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> Just a touch. What the So, after the party, Glenn and Frank Zagarino go out for a walk. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then a dude pops up with a fucking gun and shoots Frank Zagarino. Yeah. But it's like paintballs. Right. Meanwhile, Glenn Eaton is beating the shit out of this dude. <laughs> yep. And Frank Zagarino stopped him. This uh, drunken man with the paintball gun... Character is named George Cotton Shorter, played by Ron O'Neill, the original Superfly. He was also in Red Dawn, when he was, I think, uh, the enemy general. Hmm. And he was in The Master Gunfighter. <laughs> uh, I cannot properly explain The Master Gunfighter okay. to you. Is it worth watching? Yes. Okay. It's. There's a lot going on in that one. Mm -hmm. Who boy. He has a big sword fight at the end with Tom Lachlan, also known as Billy Jack. Huh. That sounds really weird. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You're telling me that a movie called Master Gunfighter ends with a sword fight. Yes. It's that a western. Like kind of movie. It's a martial arts western. Wow, okay. Well, I'm going to try to find that this weekend now. Yeah, do what you can. <clears throat> it's also a remake of a samurai movie. Of course it is. <laughs> anyway, so... Jesus. Uh, so... After that, uh, they go back home. They tuck all the 29 kids into fucking military bunks. Like, they have military barracks set up, and one of the kids actually says, wait, does this mean we're in the army? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you children, and where did you come from? Yeah. The loins of Chuck Norris. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Connors. Norris. Chuck, Chuck Connors. Norris. No. <laughs> Carlos has nothing to do with this. So. So. 
So, our villains show up in the night. Yep. Yep. Is this when the boom mic shows up? Yes. 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 For the first time that we noticed it. Yeah, so... Were there the, other times? Yes, I noticed it another time. I wasn't paying attention for it. It was so much in this scene. Yeah. They might as well have given it dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> the very least a credit. Yeah. I like high. Well, it did have a credit. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's a character. Mm. So, yeah, uh, the bad guys show up. They beat up Chuck Connors. Um, Glenn Eaton starts fighting them. Does okay, but they knock him out. And then they drag Chuck Connors and his wife out into the lawn and set him on fire well, with a fucking flamethrower. Well, they shoot, shoot her, her yeah. first. I thought they shot her after. No. no. Okay, they, they shoot him her first. Yeah. And then they set him on fire with a flamethrower. Yep. And the fire is so hot, the camera can't focus on it. Yeah. It's really convincing. It's, yeah, hell of a body burn, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this makes uh, his cremation a lot easier. I can't believe you brought that up. Mm -hmm. It's a fair point. It is. Problem solved. Did we mention his wife also got murdered? Yes. yes. Twice. <laughs> In two different orders. Okay. Um... So, yeah, uh, the funeral happens, and they, they dump his ashes into the water. Again, super easy to accomplish. And uh, Glenn Eaton has seen the killers, mm -hmm. knows who they are because of, like, a news story or something, and he wants revenge and talks Frank Zagarino into not telling the police. Which seems kind of stupid. Except that, you know, it's, it's Frank Zagarino and this guy... Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah. Bad guys don't stand a fucking chance. They do not. Oh, God, the weird cop that shows up. Weird cop. The weird cop who shows up and, like, like starts telling them to, to, like, hey, tell me who killed your dad. And it's like, yeah, it's fine. You don't know. But, hey, tell me. I'll give you my card. And he's super fucking weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is around the time when I was having a lot of trouble staying awake because of lack of sleep. Understandable. So this part of the movie is <coughs> real fuzzy for me for a little mm -hmm. while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's hit a couple of the actors that uh, we haven't touched on because since the smaller roles. Uh, one, uh, one of the bodyguards, played by... Kane Hodder. Hmm. Jason? Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, part 7 through 10. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Also in the film, playing Ace Duran's girl. Ace Duran being, of course, Henry Silva. I think this is the one who approaches him first, and he's like, look, look, I'm busy. Okay. Oh, when he's got the box. Yeah. Yeah. Played by Lori Wagner from Caligula. Oh dear. Where technically she played one of Caligula's sisters. Um, Caligula, Caligula, of course, played by Malcolm McDowell. Great performance. His speeches in that are delightful. Um, but she's basically just mostly there for a lesbian scene. Anyway, she's also in UHF, where she was one of the mud wrestlers. Oh. <laughs> this poor woman. Hey, it's a living. <laughs> It sounds like Bootsy from Doonesbury. I don't remember Doonesbury that clearly. Um, she was BD's wife, and she always got these bit parts in movies as bimbo number three or something. Okay. Okay. I mean, Caligula was hardcore, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Slightly different. I didn't say... It reminded me of her exactly, did I? Okay. Okay. Anyway, so it's time for revenge. First act of revenge, get a note from a kid telling them where to find the bad guys. <laughs> Clearly a note from the bad guys. Obviously a trap. Mm -hmm. So they immediately... I mean, you know, it's the first lead they have, right? Yeah, but it's like directly following their dad's funeral, for Christ's sake. Also, why do no, the wait, bad guys... No, there's a turning montage, isn't there? Later. 
Yeah, that's afterwards. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. There's another trap later, but that's that's another thing. So, why do the bad guys want want them now? Stupidity. Yeah, yeah. like the, they already won. They got the red diamond. They yeah. could have just fucked off. Yeah. yeah. Leave the fucking state. I don't know. So instead, they lure these guys to a place and then fight scene and then drive away? Uh, this is the dirt bikes, then hide and seek, and then, yeah. Hide and seek? Yeah, he says... Oh, yeah, he's got, like, hide. a gun. Yeah. Uh, this is Loxin shows up with a gun. No. No? It's not Loxin? Loxin is the silent one. No. Yes. I don't think he's silent. He's silent. They call him the silent assassin. It's the other guy. They might just call him the silent assassin and he still talks. Is it Robert Zadar or is it the other guy? It's Robert Zadar's best friend. Right. So, uh, Marshall Teague. Yes. I don't remember it being him, but okay. So, yeah, he starts shooting. One of them runs away. The other hides behind a pillar. Right. Somehow they both end up on dirt bikes chasing after these guys. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I love this. They're chasing after Robert Zadar in his car, right? And Frank Zagarino throws a hand grenade into the car? That's not yet. No? What happens then? Uh, they go to the strip club because they chase him back oh, to the Oh, they base. chase him to the strip club. Right. And then they have another chase <clears throat> after the strip club. Yeah, the strip club scene's kind of weird. Just, yeah. Felt a little out of place. Do you remember what the quote, this baby is real hard, is from? Oh. It's about the gun. At the end of the strip club scene, uh, they're going to go chase the guys on the dirt bikes, and then he's talking about his AK-47 that he was holding in his lap while getting also a lap dance, almost? No, no, they was just watching a girl strip. Right, so. But, oh, yeah, so, so yeah, he's, he's there, like, gun. Yeah. Um, I thought it was weird how there was a strip tease and we were, still weren't allowed to see our nipples. It, well, for one thing, resolution. The, the resolution on the video we're watching, not that great. For another, either she had them covered up with some sort of flesh-colored pasty, or she had really weird nipples, because yeah. she looked like a fucking Barbie doll. Yeah. Anyway, so, so Marshall Teague comes back to the strip club and is like, eh, shit went south. And then the good guys come into the strip club and do stuff. They get uh, captured, but... So the drunk old guy has to rescue them. Yeah, he comes in and everybody rec recognizes him. Like, is this his fucking heel turn? But no, no. Then he fights him. Right. And I love this. The fucking girlfriend also comes in and, like, takes out the bartender? Well, no, the drunk no, guy did. Oh, the drunk guy does. He like, just took a gun and just yeah. kind of, like, shot randomly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she just starts shooting. <laughs> and then she takes a baseball bat and another gun and mm -hmm. start, gets into the fight. The yeah, yeah. And I think this is this is when the other chase happens. Yes. And they throw the hand grenade into Robert Zadar's car. Yes. And he's trying to reach for it. Drives off the road and explodes like a motherfucker. Yep. yep. Really over the top. And we, we could tell that was the only way you were going to kill Robert Zadar. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Yes. So, so my interpretation of this is, I think they shot the car crash and the explosion, and they were like, "This is way too much explosion. We have to explain this. Let's shoot a bit where they throw a hand grenade in there." Right. Yeah. Only way I can explain it. Yeah, it was a Makes lot sense. of exploding. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys they continue sure the plot. Explosions. I'm going to go get some water. Because my throat's starting to get sore. Okay. Um, what happened next? Was that the truck montage? Yes. Pat all was his death? Uh, no, they got to get to the new hideout first. New I, hideout. I have well, no idea. I the old drunk guy's anybody. place. And they're like, have you ever even been here? And he pulls out all the stuff. And he's like, yeah, I stay here all the time. <laughs> uh, and then right after that, they start the training montage, which goes on for a little bit too long, in my opinion. But then again, I'm not a fan of training montages to begin with. Neither am I. And then, um, then what? Um, the bad guys find the new hideout and kidnap uh, Frank Zagarino's girlfriend. Oh, and then the sword and fight. They, yeah, they kill sword Pat and what's his dick after a sword yeah. fight. Lock Sin shows up. Yeah, and then Zank Fragarino is like, no, and then they're on motorcycles. 
Yep. All right, because now they're on the way to the casino. Because now they're really pissed off. Right. Oh, yeah, they just ramp the bikes off shit for no reason. <laughs> like you do. They gotta chase the guy through the casino and kitchen. Oh, casino. Casino <laughs> kitchens. Oh, yeah. And they knock over Poor the dude. Worker, yeah. <laughs> Three times yeah. he gets bumped into. <laughs> His life really sucks that day. Yeah. He's gotta clean up that entire mess that they uh, made. Oh, that poor dude. So there's like more chase scene. Uh, like motorcycles and yeah. shit. And they start the chase scene in the morning, and when it ends, it's yeah, nighttime. nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of gas in them, they're dirt bikes. Ah, uh, they probably like just stopped. They, they stopped, the refueled, yeah. yeah. Now, I just want to mention since you guys probably talked about the training montage. Yeah, we, we also hated it. The song over it is this fucking Euro dance pop. It's like a fucking Depeche Mode ripoff. It's also, the weirdest thing. Did not register that at all. And it's still one of those 80s self esteem anthems, but just mm, imitating Depeche Mode. Very weird. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, they do the long ass chase scene. And we all got distracted and had a conversation during this. A little bit, yeah. And then I noticed, wait, this is still the chase scene, but now it's night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so long. So eventually they get to the place, right? Uh, yeah. You mentioned that uh, girlfriend got kidnapped yes. and, and uh, Superfly got killed. Yes. So, uh, actually, the Superfly sword fight was I. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they get to the place, and they go into the place. They get locked in. Yeah, and they beat up some people well, first in a tunnel. Frank gets stabbed. Oh, yeah. Like, totally just ruins his shirt. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, they beat up some people. Uh, they end up in this arena? Yeah. Yeah. And girlfriend... Girlfriend's about to be, like, crucified. She is crucified, mm -hmm. And then they set a fire all around her. It's a giant fire ring. She's crucified on this fucking scaffolding. And she's like, There's a no, helicopter behind it's her. It's a trap. It's yeah. Like, really? No shit. <laughs> Couldn't fucking tell. It looks like they're about to summon King Kong. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah, yeah. Were you the one that mentioned that? Yes. Okay. But yeah. And so they, they're in there and all the bad guys who are still alive show up. We get a really good fight between Glenn Eaton and Marshall Teague. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, really good. Like, I wish more of the movie was these two people beating the shit out of each other. Yeah, it's really yeah. awesome. And, uh... Is it... Is it, uh... Frank that... I don't know, ends up with... The machine with, gun? With a, with a fairly large gun, and then at some point he just... Two hand throws it at a dude. Oh yeah! Dude, like, when he runs out of ammo. Head. Yeah, that was fucking I great. I love that because he's like dude twenty five feet away from him. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, fuck this. And uh, yeah, you end up with uh, uh, Loxin fighting Frank Zagarino. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, Loxin tries to do his uh, trick with the knife hidden in his teeth to cut his throat. Right. But Frank Zagarino just just hits him some more, and he drops <laughs> the knife. Mm -hmm. And then he tries to do his other trick. What the fuck was his other trick? Light him on fire? No, no, that no. wasn't it. He had another trick. Yeah, what the f uh, Oh, the throat thing. No. We just party. mentioned that. No, not the cutting the throat, but where he's The like, ripping the throat. Oh, oh. The th yeah, the, the fucking uh, full fucking roadhouse street fighter, Sonny Chiba, ripping out throat. Yeah. Frank Zagarino doesn't do, let him do that. Just lights him on fire. Puts him in the fucking fire. <laughs> and Beautiful body burn. Dude, yeah. he, he burns for a long time. Like, in a lot of body burns, you can, like, see a little bit of the mask that the stuntman's wearing or, you know, the, the extra clothing. No, you just see fire, but it's in the shape of a person and it's walking. <laughs> it's so good. It's very good, and it was probably terrifying for the poor stuntman. Mm -hmm. So then... They, there's a fucking Laws r rocket launcher lying around, so they untie their girlfriend as Henry Silva's getting away in the helicopter, give her the Laws rocket launcher, and take out the fucking helicopter. And it is, okay, it is so clearly just a shot of a helicopter and then a superimposed explosion. But it's beautiful. It's yeah. good enough. Yeah. It's great. So who, their girl who was it that said, you ain't got the balls to Frank kill Silver. me? Oh, that was, uh... 
Fuck. That was that was Marshall Teague. To Frank, uh, but no, not Frank. Uh, Henry Silva. To Henry Silva. Oh yeah. So Henry, Henry Silva shoots him through the chest with a shotgun, and yeah. it's gorgeous. It's just red yes. paste. Yeah. I love it when somebody's like, "You won't do that," blah blah blah, and then they do it. Mm-hmm. I love that. Cause fuck you. Yeah, so they, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they blow up the helicopter, and as they're walking away, I think it's Frank just picked up an extra grenade, pulls a pin. Throws it behind him. Oh, yeah, he actually says something like, you know, why not? Yeah. <laughs> and blows up the set behind him. Just, just Roll everything credits. goes the fuck mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. And the movie ends. <laughs> yeah, it was cute and fun, but it wasn't as good as Valerian was. Yeah. 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 And it got dull in spots. In spots, yeah. Like, there, there are moments of humor, there are moments of great action, but it's it's... It's it's not like one of those all time classic goofy action films. Yeah. It's, it's it's worth watching if you're already into this kind of shit. Yeah. You will find fun here. Yeah. But don't expect too much from it. But the, the whole like last fifteen minutes is just Oh yeah, that's great. It's a ride. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Fantastic. <laughs>